Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Terraria modding tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to create a custom whip. Now this one has been requested for quite some time and without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So you might be looking at my code here thinking, that is a lot and yeah it is and that's why I'm not going to be coding it live this time. I'm going to be going over code that I've already written and that I know works so that way I'm not, you know, explaining something and then it ends up being completely wrong and I accidentally explain something in a way that is incorrect or uh, is kind of lacking in the full truth. So we're just going to go ahead and walk through every single little uh, line of code here. But first, let's go ahead and see what this actually looks like in the game so you can see what we're, what we're working with here. So you can see my hopper, I got this gel whip, this 22 summon damage. I don't think I've ever used whips in Terraria before. But basically what a whip does is it does this. You can hold it up if you want to get a larger and more damaging uh, version of the whip or you can just kind of spam it for a smaller range attack and you can see it works fine we have our own uh, custom textures and everything we can change the damage and it has the sound effects the uh, the iconic whip sound effects and it just works like a normal whip should and one last thing before we start is I want to introduce you guys to something called example mod. So example mod is basically this GitHub page where you can find a whole bunch of source code for items. Videos like the ones I'm making right now are helpful if you don't understand what's going on in the example mod examples because I can explain it in person and I can answer any questions that people have about it, which is usually where people are going to struggle with the most. But if you want to get some more advanced examples of how to create a whip and more mathy explanations, you could say you can go ahead and check out the GitHub page and check out the example whip projectile. But first things first, we're going to need two PNG files. The first one is going to be, of course, your actual whip for the item in the inventory. This one's pretty straightforward. This is just the normal sprite as usual. Next, we're going to actually need to have the whip projectile. So as you can see, the whip projectile that I have here is 10 by 90, or technically it's 5 by 46, just scaled up uh, by 2. But you're going to want to make something that looks kind of similar to this. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. Like, for example, you might want to maybe make it look a little bit nicer. Um, but this one just fits the theme of kind of like this gel whip, which is the kind of the theme of the whole mod. So once you have that, make sure you go ahead and save that uh, in the correct folder. I have a folder for items. I'm going to save the gel whip in the items folder. And then you also want to save the projectile in your projectiles folder. If you don't have one already, make sure to create one. You can go ahead and either mainly go to your mod folder by going into your mod sources straight from Terraria like this. You can go into your workshop, develop mods, and open sources. And then you can click on your mod. And then you'll have all of your mod files here. Now, I also got some comments the other day about opening your .solution file and your .csproj file. You just have to double click on these. If it's not working, it's probably because you have a misconfigured uh, version of Visual Studio. So you might want to either update that and make sure you have all of the required uh, downloaded tools for that. And if you need more information, I've also provided a link in the description about how to set up Visual Studio for Terraria modding specifically. So once you have that done, we can go back into our folder. You can create all of the different subfolders you need so you can save your PNG files in the correct organized way. And once you have that, you can open your .solution file and navigate over to your folders. And we'll create a new .cs file, which since I already have the code here, I don't have to do that, but it's pretty straightforward. You can just go right click on the subfolder you want and then add a new item. And you can create a C-sharp item. And you can, then you can just start coding along or checking out this code. Or if you want, you can copy it. But uh, I would recommend following along with my explanations before you start just uh, copying all the code. So you can actually understand what's going on. So at the top here, we have our usings, which if you haven't seen the first couple episodes of the C Sharp for Terraria, these just include different libraries of functions and code files and a whole bunch of data types that we're going to need to create our item. And you might also notice uh, at the top here, I'm also using projectiles. This is because I'm, I want to access my projectiles folder so I can say, hey, I want to turn this projectile that I have into a whip projectile. First, we have our public override void set static defaults. So over here, we should actually probably set a name. I didn't do that when I was setting mine up for some reason. We'll say display name dot set defaults uh, gel whip. Why not? As for the creative item sacrifices catalog um, dot instance dot sacrifice count needed by item ID, I'm pretty sure that has something to do with the minions. I'm actually not sure 100% uh, what that does. We'll, I will actually try getting rid of this and see what happens. Uh, and then below this, we just have our override set defaults. Now over here, I am just kind of copying uh, the other whip. I'm just saying, okay, item.default to whip, 
mod content that projectile type gel whip projectile we're basically saying hey i want this projectile that we have over here to be our whip projectile and along with that we're also copying the item defaults for pretty much a standard whip which means the damage right here is going to be 20 and if we actually hover over this you can see the pr the parameters it is the projectile it shoots the damage the knockback and then the animation total time now you can make that faster or slower that is completely up to you and below this we're going to set our shoot speed to four you can also change that that is entirely up to you and we're also going to set our item dot rarity we'll set this to blue because it makes more sense uh, for a slimy whip and we're also going to set the item dot channel so item dot channel allows you to hold down your mouse button while you're using something and it won't like reuse it it won't have like that uh, weird animation thing where it pauses for a brief second. It'll just continually use something. So this is used on things like the Aqua Scepter. That's really all I can think of right now. But I know I personally used it for items that you just hold down. Like for example, in Sorcery Overhaul, I used it for the Death Eater staff, um, and I've used it for the Fan Fire and that whole line of weapons and upgrades. So it is definitely a very helpful attribute of an item. And over here, this is also very important because we want to make sure that this item can receive melee prefixes. So we're going to make sure public override bool melee prefix and then return it true. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward for the actual item itself. But the real complicated stuff comes in the projectile. So let's go and scroll up over here. And at the top, we already need to make sure we have Microsoft.xna.framework as well as xna.framework.graphics uh, as well as the rest of the general usings up here. So the reason why we need all of these graphics and xna.framework things is because we're going to be dealing a lot with vectors. And we'll see this a little bit later on in the code when we're actually creating the AI for the whip. And right here we have our public override void set static defaults. And right here this will set this projectile as a whip. And that makes the sound effect and everything, I would assume. Because we don't actually ever explicitly play that sound effect when we hit an NPC. And here, this will public override void set defaults. And below that, we have something that is really awesome, projectile.default to whip. That's all we have to do. And it will uh, clone the defaults of the AI and whatever the defaults are for a typical whip. Uh, if you want, you can then change some stuff as well. Maybe you want the, I don't know, some weird stuff, like you want to disappear for whatever reason after 30 ticks. That'd be kind of strange, but you can customize stuff if you want. And then we, over here, we're creating two fri uh, private floats. One is the timer and one is the charge time. So the timer is what's going to be used to time how long we can charge our whip. And the charge time is going to be the actual uh, time we've charged the whip for. And we're going to use that when we calculate the length and the damage of the whip. So it's important that we have these two things here. And we're going to be using projectile AI 0 and 1 for those values. This is kind of what the projectile.ais are. It's just like an empty array of stuff that you can use to you know get get values and set values um, that we don't have to create a bunch of new variables for that and it's kind of nice but you don't always need them but it does look very organized so we're going to be using them like that and then under that we're going to say public override bool pre ai so this returns true or false it is a boolean if it we if we return false then that means that we're going to continue charging if we return true then it means we're going to stop charging a whip and we're going to actually use our whip. Over here, we say player owner. Now what this does is it just says, okay, the owner of this whip, the person who's actually swinging this whip is the main, is the owner of the projectile itself, which is just the player that actually used the whip. And the reason why we have this here, and you'll see this in a lot of different code, is because for multiplayer, we have to specify who the owner is. Because otherwise, then it would, if we just said main.player, well, what player is that? It would probably be like the player ID that has the ID of zero, which would just be the first player. So we actually have to specify the owner of the projectile. Okay, and if not owner.channel, so if we are no longer holding down our mouse button and the charge time is greater than 120, which I think is one second or two seconds, then we will return true and throw our whip. If the remainder of charge time plus one is equal equal to zero, then we'll add a segment to the whip. And what this does is it increases the length of our whip uh, every one fifth of a second. Or assuming a second is uh, 60 frames in Terraria, then this would be w one fifth of a second. We would add more to the whip segments. But if it's 120, then it would be a little bit faster actually. And we're gonna talk about the difference between plus plus here and then also saying plus plus there. We're gonna have a video about um, operators in C Sharp on for episode three of our tutorial series on how to code in C Sharp. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, below this, we have our projectile.whip settings.range multiplier. 
So this is just an actual multiplier that is. So this is just the actual multiplier that's given across the entire range of the whip. So you can think about one divided by 120 F. Uh, that's actually going to be increasing the size of the whip, not by a very large amount, but it's kind of like about 0 0.08 every tick of the game. So like eventually it'll reach two if we go past two seconds. Now, if you wanted to actually increase this value and make it so it could have a larger maximum length, you could change this to something like 60 or 30, um, but 120 is fine for us for now. Okay, under this we have owner.itemAnimation, so this is what will actually animate our player. So we're going to say equals owner.itemAnimation max, which, which means we're just going to hold it there. We're not going to move our hand. And then we say owner.itemTime equals owner.itemTime to max. That's the same thing. We're just making sure we keep our hand in place while we're still holding the whip. And then once we release it, then we'll actually animate it. Okay, so that's actually the easy part, believe it or not. And then under here we have the public override void on hit NPC. Now because whips are a summon item, we want the minions to target that NPC when we hit it. So that's what this does right here. Okay, and now this is where we're going to get into a lot of the math here. So this is going to draw the actual whip line. And for this, this is very cryptic. I had to go into the example mod to get some of the uh, code for this because it's just, you would never be able to figure this out on your own. It's very specific, but we're getting the texture of the fishing line. And if you remember the fishing line, it has this kind of curve line like a fishing line should have. And that's essentially what we're doing here is we're copying that kind of texture for our whip. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create an origin. So this is going to be like your pivot point. And then we, and that vector is going to be the frames width divided by two, and then just two for the Y. So that's a very, very specific value there. Um, I'm not fully sure why it would be two. I think that's maybe the offset that works best for when it's drawn on the player or something. And then this is where things get a little bit crazy here, is we're going to create a list of vectors. So the best way for me to explain this is to open up paint. So let's imagine we have a bunch of different positions on the screen. Let's say one here, one here, and one here, and one here. And we connect the dots. Okay. Let's say this is our origin point right here. And this is our end point. All of these dots are just a list of vectors. So let's imagine that this point, our origin, let's just say for the sake of simplicity, this is zero, zero, or our player's position. Over here is something like four, eight, or whatever, I don't know what that would be. And then over here, we have ourselves like 12, 10, and then we go back to our end point, which is like 16, I don't know, like two, or whatever. And you can think of this as just points on a graph. That's also a really bad six. Let me just redraw that. And you might be wondering, okay, why is this important? Well, when a computer wants to draw a curve somewhere, a curve is actually just a series of a bunch of straight lines. The more straight lines you have, the more curvier, quote unquote, the curve is going to look. Now say instead of having four, we had kind of eight, like this. And we drew straight lines between all of these. You can see that looks a little bit more like a curve now. Well, now imagine you got even more intense and you had like a bunch of tiny little dots. Let's just do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like, I don't know how many. And it got super small. And you're drawing all of these small little lines in between those dots. Well, that looks much more like a curve now, doesn't it? And of course, I'm not a perfect human being, so I can't draw perfect straight lines. But uh, it would look much more like a curve the smaller and smaller you go. And that's essentially what we're doing here, is we're getting a bunch of points and we're just drawing lines between those points to create the illusion of a curve. And that's how curves are usually created in games. It's just a series of different lines that are drawn together to make it look like a curve. And that's what we're doing here, is we're getting a list of a bunch of vectors, a bunch of positions, those little dots, and then we're drawing lines, or in this case, not it's not lines, it's our sprite. Remember that sprite that we had over here? Let's open that real quick. This thing right here, we're drawing that, except we're just drawing it kind of uh, warped a little bit at those positions to make it look like it has a curve on it. And that's what this for loop is right here. It's looping through all those elements of those lines and then it's going to be getting the rotation. So let's say that we're at this point right here, right? We're at point, this point, and then we want to go towards this point and draw a line towards that point. But we have to get the direction of where that point is relative to this point, right? So we have to get that rotation and then draw that line there and then do the same for the next one. That's as far as I'm going to explain this because otherwise I would just be going down some massive rabbit hole. And that's how we draw the line. And that's how the whip is drawn. 
And also notice how this is a private void draw line. This is not provided by Terraria. This is something that you make yourself. This is your own function that you can use. And we use it under our pre-draw. Right here, we create a list of vectors and we fill the whip control points like I was talking about earlier, which are all those points that you see right over here. And then what? We draw the line. We pass in the list of vectors that we made and then we draw the line between them. Or in this case, it's not a line, it's the sprite, but you get the point. And then down here, you might see like what is this supposed to mean? Well, this is actually just getting the hitbox of the whip and making sure that and making sure that it conforms to where the uh, line is being drawn at least somewhat accurately. And that's why we have this really weird if statement here with nested else ifs where we have if the list dot count minus two and then else if i is greater than 10, 5, and 0. It's just like this crazy thing of if statements. Uh, and that's just changing where the hitbox is and the height of the hitbox and the actual location of it. Because as you can see, if we go into Terraria, the whip itself kind of goes up in the swirl. And we want to make sure that we get uh, the right hitbox there. Now, you can actually do some debugging if you want here. You can draw a primitive. You can draw like a rectangle or something, some texture. That is the width and height of the hitbox. And you can see where the real hitbox is of the whip. Because the real hitbox of the whip is not actually what you think it is. It's kind of like this hard-coded thing. Um, that you would have to change yourself and it's individual for each different whip so you'd have to do some testing for that so that's what this whole else if stuff over here is doing it's just it's just getting the actual hitbox and then over here um, this scale right there that's just changing if you see if we try and throw the whip again you can see it has like a smooth scale uh, effect where it starts off at a small scale and then kind of gets bigger as the whip is thrown what lerp does is it allows you to interpolate a value to another value and what i mean by that is let's say we have 10 and 100. we want to make this 10 go towards 100 but we don't want to set it equal we want to kind of have it smoothly interpolate so it goes like to 11 12 etc and kind of adds up in a way like that well we can do that by lerping and what that does is we take the value we want to lerp let's say 10 and then the target value we want to lerp it to which is 100 and then the intensity of that interpolation which let's just say it's 0 0.3 or something like that well if we constantly divide 10 by 7 right so let's do something a little bit easier let's divide it by 2 we get 5 okay awesome so we're getting closer towards 0 let's just say we want it to look towards 0 in this case and now let's divide 5 by 2 again okay 2.5 awesome so we're getting closer let's divide it by 2 again 1.25. So you can kind of see what's going on here. If we want to lerp from 10 to 0, you can just divide it by that value. And that's what that's essentially doing, is we keep dividing it by this constant value here, and it slowly and slowly gets closer towards our target value. And the magic of this is that it gets smoother as time goes on. We divide it by 2 at first, we have 5, or actually we start at 10, then 5, then 2.5, then 1.25, and then so on and so forth. And you can see the difference here is that it's a huge change from 10 to 5, less of a change from 5 to 2.5, and then much smaller of a change to 1.25. And then it gets even smaller and smaller as it goes on. And so you get a very smooth interpolation of the two values. And that's what this lerp function does right here. And that is how a whip works in Terraria. So if we go ahead and go to our settings and build and reload, because I actually, if you remembered, I wanted to try testing uh, this over here, getting rid of the creative item sacrifices. I want to see what happens if we do that because I actually haven't tested that yet. So let's go into our workshop, develop mods, and build and reload real quick. Okay, and if we do this, you can see it still works perfectly fine and everything is working as intended. If you like the more in-depth explanations, then make sure to leave a comment below and I'll do more of these uh, in the future. If you want to support my work, you can become a patron with the link in the description. And I'm also trying to currently develop my uh, first very large commercial game right now. Uh, and I'm trying to fund a animated trailer for it, which is actually really exciting. So if you want to check out the project and get some more information on it, you can go ahead and join the Discord with the link in the description, or actually check out my main channel where I post videos that I believe to be higher quality uh, all around than the ones on here. But once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.